What is good, Vibe Gang? It is your boy. Right here with a new. Miss Nancy! Miss Nancy and husband. Hello, sir. How's everybody doing over there? Lucky Stars Who Meet Elvis Part 1. We're doing Part 1 today. We're doing Part 2 tomorrow. That's a fact. Shout out to Miss Nancy for the dono. We love you over here in the Vibe House. That's a factual actual. Federico, cut the beat, man. I think I did... Oh, back, it's tight. I think I did a... Uh, when I started... First reacting to Elvis, I think I did a uh, a video like that about like certain like it was a, a video of certain stars of like Whitney Houston and a couple of other people that were talking to him. But I, there's like a whole bunch of them out there, so it's awesome. I want to watch all of them. And this is water for those of you that don't know. It's water. Lucky stars who met Elvis Part One. Elvis Presley and stars. It is on you. Let's go. A uh, little birdie told me that when you were a little girl, you actually met Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? Whitney. Oh, Whitney Houston. Oh, I love Whitney Houston with all my heart and soul. Little birdie told me that when you were a little girl, you actually met Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? Do you remember? It wasn't actually. You don't really meet Elvis. Uh -huh. You actually just look at Elvis. <laughs> okay. It's my mother sang with Elvis for years. Yeah. Uh, she and um, her, her group we were called the Sweet Inspirations. Yeah. They also sang for Aretha for yeah. many, many years. On most of the uh, Aretha Franklin, another goat, another goat. Facts. Uh, in the '60s, uh -huh. they were on all of Aretha songs. Well, um, Elvis took a liking to them, mm -hmm. and my mom sang with him for many years, and they were very close. Yeah. Um, I just remember at one point being in a room, and we were all in this room, my mother and the singers, and we, they, you know, the, you know, the usually backstage kind of thing. And he just walks in the room with his mink on, with his glasses on. <laughs> oh my God. And he just walks in, he says something, and everybody just, you don't say anything, you just look. <laughs> it was just one of those moments I won't forget as a kid. Oh my it wasn't gosh. like, hi, Mr. Elvis, nice to meet you. You didn't do that. You just sat back and just, just looked at him. Amazing. Was, Amazing, amazing to look at. Yeah. Just amazing. Wow. And just to be in his presence was awesome. And Whitney Houston was like a baby in that one, wasn't she? She was like a, a child when it came to that. And this is why, this is why, like what I was saying yesterday, that's why this video is dope to watch because you have to understand this is not Elvis's fans saying these things. Yeah, Elvis's fans are, are obviously always going to push for Elvis. These are people that know Elvis, people that have met Elvis, people that that have had interactions with Elvis, saying these things. I still with all that proof. This book, as I've mentioned, has very detailed accounts of Secretary Rumsfeld's uh, encounters with all sorts of public figures, world leaders. Uh, people in very influential and important positions, but maybe one of the most intriguing is your your encounter with Elvis. Why don't you tell us about that? <laughs> oh my goodness, Elvis Presley. On any given Sunday today, if Joyce and I can't get to church, we <clears throat> we have some Elvis Presley tape singing gospel, and they are wonderful. And we Absolutely. played him Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Now, then he would sing a ballad, and it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, this man had a voice that was spectacular. And I love country music, and I love ballads, and he would sing, and it would just, you'd be carried away with it. Then he'd take the scarf, wipe his face, the sweat off, and throw it out in the crowd, and everyone would scream. <laughs> so he threw one to Alton East Davis. And Altavis gave it to Joyce. And it's framed. <laughs> um, and way off in the corner, Elvis Presley had me cornered. I was against the corner, and he was, he's big. And he was like this, and I was kind of hidden right behind him. He was talking about the United States Army. 
If you remember, there was a draft during that period and some of the people did not go in the draft. They went to Canada or they refused and he went in and served in the United States Army and he served in Germany and he wanted to talk about it. He loved the Army, he valued his time serving and he was sitting there going back and forth with me about this and that and the other. And, he, and, and on top of that, and that's another thing that people keep on forgetting because I keep on forgetting, Elvis is a veteran. Elvis went to war for, went, went to the military for us. But I mean, he was, he was forced. But this coming out of this man's mouth, he loved the military. He loved our military. You know how much respect he showed. He showed when I went to Grayson, I saw all the badges and and they, they, they gave him. They gave him. They made badges, police badges. He loves our military. He loves our police, uh, the, the the police departments. He he loved that portion of it because it's what he believes in giving your heart giving your body giving everything for the united states government going out there and risking you guys' lives to come to for our freedom come on dog he was all around a solid solid dude and i just want people to just give him his props that's all i just want people to give up his props because it's come on bro the proof is in the pudding that's a fact. Talk, mister. And he was sitting there going back and forth with me about this and that and the other thing. And I just found it fascinating that here was this man who a minute ago had been up there uh, wiping the sweat off his face and throwing these things and everyone screaming. And here were all these gorgeous women walking around this dressing room. And he was standing there asking me question after question about the United States Army. It says a lot for the man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You were a very good friend with Elvis, weren't I you? I loved him. I yeah. loved the man. You know, I, 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 when the first time I ever met him, he came to see my, my show. He came to see my show first before I saw him. And believe me, it took me a good 10 minutes to quieten the audience down once I introduced him. He stood up and he had a cape on. And he opened this cape up on, uh, 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 as he stood on the... On the on the um, in the booth in Las Vegas, with this cape open, you know, like Batman, and uh, <laughs> the audience went absolutely berserk. Yeah. It's the way he said Batman. <laughs> the way he said Batman killed me right now. <laughs> you should have talked to Tom. You should have talked to Tom Jones, man. Tom Jones would have told you, never bring Elvis to your shows, bro. He takes over. That's just the power of that artist. That's the, that's the power that he brings. Elvis was very influ influential in, the, in this world, man. If he, if he wanted to take this audience to a bad area, he could have. I think if I was if I was alive back in those days, I think I would have tried my best. If if I would have if I would have listened to Elvis back then, I think I would have tried my best to go and meet that man. That's a fact. I would have tried my best. Man, and uh, the audience went absolutely berserk. And I said, "Shh, this is my show." <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't quieten them down. Not for ten minutes. And, and so I brought out some of my big gun songs, you know, to try and quiet them, which I did in the, in the end. And he came backstage and he said, what a hell of a show. Thank you very much. And, and thank you for introducing. This is how humble he was. He says, thank you for introducing me. He said, wow. Elvis, hmm. you know, I said, Elvis, I can't tell you how I thank you for being in my show. <laughs> you know, that's number one. But he was so, such a nice guy. Talk to you today about Elvis Presley. You did? Yes. I loved Elvis Presley. When I was a boy, people used to think I looked like him. I had long, I had a big Elvis hair, you know. I forgot his name. Damn it, what's his name? I know his son is Charlie Sheen, and that's Mr. Sheen. <laughs> I forgot his first name. When I was a boy, people used to think I looked like him. I had long, I had a big Elvis hair, you know. I did, seriously. I loved him. Well, there were two icons in the 50s that made all the difference in our lives. It was Elvis Presley and James Dean. And they had a profound effect on our culture. And they still do. It's amazing, isn't it? 
It was, it was overwhelming, you know. Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, that just popped in my head, man. Martin. Martin. It's amazing, isn't it? It was, it was overwhelming, you know, because Elvis was the first male singer that was equally loved by boys and girls. I mean, you know, I'm going back to the 50s, you know, uh, when I was growing up as a teenager in Ohio, and uh, we, we took our music very serious. And when we spent a nickel to hear a song, you know, in a jukebox at a restaurant or a club. A nickel? Now they take debit cards and credit cards. Stop playing with them, man. <laughs> Oh my God, a nickel, a nickel, oh my God. But you see, that's what I was saying. Elvis has that effect on everybody. Usually this this, this will be more of a woman's lane because he sings a lot of love songs and stuff like that. So it will be more of a woman's artist. Elvis was for women and men. Men wanted to be him, women wanted to be with him. And some men wanted to be with them too. I'm pretty sure of it. I do. Spend a nickel to hear a song, you know, in a jukebox at a restaurant or a club. Why, it was big, you know. And uh, there was no hesitation with Elvis. For boys and girls, you know, uh, very often the boys would prefer a girl singer, Patty Page, or any one of those uh, that were popular at the time. And uh, the girls would always go for Perry Como and Frank Sinatra and all, until Elvis came, and Elvis kind of brought us together. There was no hesitation with playing Elvis's stuff on either side, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. He was unbelievable. He was revolutionary, you know. I mean, he just changed the way we listened. That's and, a fact. Uh, had a profound effect uh, on all of us, culturally and musically and emotionally and spiritually, everything. Yeah. Still miss him, man. Eh. I, his explanation of Elvis is... Is, is exactly on the money. Well, well fucking said. Musically, and emotionally, and spiritually, everything. Yeah. Still miss him, man. Eh, you know, it's hard to believe he's gone because there's so much still uh, reflective of him, you know. Absolutely. Uh, now, he was definitely one of the, the first rock and roll stars to cross over into doing movies. It is my honor to welcome the legendary star of stage, screen, and television, Angela Lansbury. Let's talk a little about Elvis Presley. You were seven years older, I think, but you played his mother in Blue Hawaii. What was that experience like? Well, I was uh, uh, obviously awed by the, uh, the, you know, being in the, pre the presence. And, uh, but he was an awfully nice young man in those days. She is the best actress out there. I'm sorry. But she is. She's absolutely. She, she's so good. And what's that one movie she's in? Um, what the hell's the name of that movie? She was a lawyer or something like that. I forgot the name of it. You know, being in the pre the presence, and uh, but he was an awfully nice young man in those days. He always was a wonderfully nice young man, very caring person. Uh, he had his terrible problems of very personal nature, but in those days he'd just come out of the army, he was fit, he was slender, and he was at top of his form. And he couldn't have been nicer to me. We had a lovely time. It was a wonderful location. We were on Kauai in the Hawaiian Islands. I'll never forget it. It was really wonderful. Did you get to spend much time with him? Yes, we, you know, we sat around the set, uh -huh. and uh, I had some wonderful scenes with the man who played my husband, and the three of us, you uh -huh. know, together. And she was such a funny character, uh -huh. you know. Her whole uh, reaction to her son, who she didn't understand at all, you know. She was a real kind of southern bale type, you know, and she was going on, give me some sugar, honey, you know, kind of thing. And he, he loved it. He thought it was terribly funny. Uh -huh. It was very sweet. Presley years ago wanted to record my song. These are people that worked with Elvis. These are people that worked with him. That spent time with him. They, they, they in a way knew him. He thought it was terribly funny. Uh -huh. It was very sweet. Presley years ago wanted to record my song, I Will Always Love You. He had it worked up and had planned to do it and was in town to do the session. And his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, who was a brilliant man, by the way, 
he called to say at the last minute that they only recorded songs that they had half the publishing on. And I wouldn't give them half the publishing because I couldn't, because that's just stuff that I uh, plan to keep from my family and keep in my own catalog. And so that. See, see what I'm saying? I heard about this also. But Dolly Parton had made a song. I will always love you, right? I love that fucking song. I love that song. Close your eyes and imagine Elvis singing it. Mr. Colonel Parker wants to be all, 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 all greedy and, and mess up the deal. She was, she was a hundred percent willing for that to happen. But they, he wanted the publishing out of it. No, you crazy? She's the creator. She's gonna keep her publishing, bro. That's her. That's her Easter nest. That's like, like the the. The, the top song that made her who she is. And she needs that for, like she said, for her her future, her family. That song is going to keep on bringing them checks in, bro. Are you crazy? We could have had a great song of, uh, of Elvis singing this, man, and he messed it up. I uh, uh, plan to keep from my family and keep in my own catalog. And so that meant that Elvis didn't get to sing the song. Hopefully he was as disappointed as I was because he loved the song and I wanted to hear him sing it, but that was just one of those business decisions that I had to make, and I don't blame Colonel Understandable. Tom, uh, but I still wish I could have heard Elvis sing, I will always love you. I met Elvis when I was on Laughing, so I was sort of in that world over there. So he came on the show or just visited he came on. He was on the set because we used to rehearse in the studio at NBC, yeah. and in walks this guy, and he was so beautiful that it... Goldie Hawn, right? something like that and in walks this guy and he was so beautiful that it just took my breath away everybody's breath away and he walked up to me and he t tousled my hair and he said you look like a chicken that's just been hatched <laughs> and I didn't know what to think <laughs> I thought it was a compliment, but my God, I've never met a guy with more charisma yeah, in my I life. Bet. He was the guy who basically turned on. You know when jeans turn on and off? You say, well, when your jeans turn on, there's something that's in your jeans. Well, my hormones turned on. Really? And he did that turn on for my hormones. He kick-started you. He kick-started well, my hormones. Well, of course. Well, I was over here out here getting ginger. I was getting people. <laughs> oh my god! What are you making girls get puberty for, man? That's crazy. <laughs> Look at the power, bro. Like, is, there's a different type of power, bro. This is not the same. You guys are not the same. I'm sorry. He did that turn on for my hormones. He kickstarted you. He kickstarted well, my hormones. Well, well, of course he did. He's Elvis Presley, well, the king of yeah. rock and roll. I was 18 years old and in love with Elvis, you know, totally in love with Elvis. And, uh, Frank Sinatra's daughter. He, he just, he melted my heart to meet him in person. Elvis, right in the thick of his up and coming fame, was put into the army. And he came back from the army, and that was the Welcome Back show. I believe, if I, my memory serves me correct, that's about 1960. It turned out to be a very, very cute moment in history, I think, with the two of them singing. <laughs> work in the same way, only in different areas. <laughs> love me tender, love me sweet, never let me go. You have made my life complete, and I love you so. Those fingers in my hair, I come here to stare, that strips my conscience bare is Love me tender, love me true. 
he loved to do stuff like that and put himself next to the most important singer of the day, you know, rock and roll singer of the day. I think both guys, and I could say this with some authority, both of them were nervous. I'm sure both of them were shaking in their... They looked nervous. ...shoes and boots, respective, but um, I like that about my dad. And they looked, they looked absolutely nervous when they're standing next to each other like that. To do that. For my darling, I love you. Mm. Pretty all time, Frank. Sure it does, buddy. <laughs> and I always will. you met uh, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. This I thought was lovely. This is oh, a great well, story. Uh, this would have, you know, I was... Uh, One of the best comedians in the world, brother. Elvis, Elvis Presley. Presley. This I thought was lovely. This oh, is a great well, story. Uh, this would have, you know, I was, uh, it was about 1972, so I was not famous, you know, and uh, I was uh, working in Vegas, opening for Anne Margaret, you know, and, and they knew each other. They had worked together. Right. And I, first of all, I thank Anne, Anne Margaret and her husband, Roger Smith, for hiring me because I had a weird act. And, uh, like, what kind of stuff were you well, doing? Well, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Um, this was one of my bits. Like, I, I, you know, I had sort of a, like a funny magic act. And this was, this was one of the bits I did. I would say, and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the napkin trick. I go like this, and I'd, I'd, I'd really drag this out, you know. And I'd bow, and I'd, you know, thank you. And, and so. And following Anne Margaret in uh, the next week was Elvis Presley, and he came in to see the show that night. And so now the show's over. Oh my God! And, and we're all in our dressing rooms afterwards. And I look down the hall, and I see this beautiful woman coming down the hall, and it's Priscilla, oh, yes. his wife. And, and then she sort of—I pe have no idea—it's Priscilla. Anyway, she peels away, and then there's Elvis, and he's all in white with this black hair, and he's got that. Huge. This is the thin Elvis, by the way. This, he looks great. And he's got this beautiful diamond buckle, you know, that celebrates his appearances at the Hilton Hotel. And he walks by, he walks by me, and he sees me, and I'm kind of like this, and he says, Son, you have an oblique sense of humor. <laughs> That's fire, bro. That is so dope. I never heard that story before. That is dope as hell, man. Oh, Miss Nancy, I can't wait for part two. Part two is going to be tomorrow. Shout out to Miss Nancy for the dodo. I got more dodos coming. I love all of you guys. But this is proven fact right here. That Elvis is exactly the person that we say he is. Facts. I love you guys. Peace. Relax. 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 That's fine.